In this video, we're going to work on part four of this project. Namely, we're going to learn how to create a distribution with class limits and boundaries, and the midpoints, the frequencies, and the relative frequencies, all found with Excel. Now, remember here that we have a lower class limit of zero for this particular data set, and you're going to use your class width that you find here for part nine, or for part three, number nine. I would highly recommend rounding to a nice convenient number. Um, nearest 100, quite frankly, often works for this particular data set. So I'm going to use a different data set than obviously the one you guys are having to do. I'm going to use this exam data set, which believe it or not, you actually already saw in the chapter two lecture notes if you watched those. So we have these final exam scores right here. So these are final exam scores. So these are the raw scores. And I want to create a table for these scores. All right, I'm going to set my first class um, lower limit, first class lower limit to be 30, not zero like it is for your problem. So keep in mind, this is going to be a little bit different. And my class width, I'm going to pick 10. You would pick whatever you found already for part nine, remembering to round. Again, nearest hundred is a nice way to go on that one. Right? And you're going to have a lower class that starts at 0, not 30 like mine is. Okay, so keeping in mind those differences, let's create some lower class limits, shall we? So I'm going to have lower class limit here. I'm going to have upper class limit here. And if you like, you can actually just make the classes as their, themselves in their own cells. So I'll do exam grade classes right here, just so we can have all of them so you can see. Now I'm going to leave a a row blank at the top because I'm going to need it later so I'm just going to kind of leave myself an empty space because I have to make kind of a fake class but we'll deal with that later. All right so for right now I'm going to type in my lower class limit is 30. Of course for your project it's zero but for me it's 30 and then I want my width to be the distance between that lower class limit and the next lower class limit. That's what the class width is by definition back here in the chapter two notes. It's the difference between the consecutive lower class limits. All right, so I want to take equals and then I want to click on this cell. You can see this is cell E3. E3. It's kind of like you sank my battleship, right? So cell E3 or whatever cell you're in and I want to add my class width of 10 to it. Enter. And that calculated the next number is 40. And the beautiful thing about Excel is that it will actually fill in a whole column full of values for you if you so desire. And here's how you do it. Once you've created a cell reference, that's what this is called, you are referring back to cell E3. So once I refer to cell E3 in a formula, then I can click on the cell that has that formula, which is E4, the one with 40 in it. And down in the bottom right corner, do you see how it has there that little box there? If you make it so that your mouse kind of hovers over that little box, it turns into a plus sign. Then you click and hold down your left mouse button and then drag it down the column and then lift up and it will have filled in E4 plus 10, E5 plus 10, and it kind of works its way down the column. Beautiful, isn't it? Now, if I need the upper class limits to be figured out as well, I'll worry about these in a minute because I'm going to have to delete a couple, but we'll figure that out in a minute. In the meantime, I need to figure out my upper class limits. Well, your upper class limit is the number that's right below that next lower class. So you could write that a lot of ways. You could write 39, you could write 39.9, 39.99, etc. In general, I like to go to the same number of decimal places or one more that my data set has. So I would do either 39 or 39.9. .9. Me personally, I think it's safer to go 39.9. .9. Add in one more decimal place than my data set actually has. Some people don't like that and they want just 39. Either way is fine. But if you have one decimal place in here, like if this was, if your grade for an exam was 43.5, you definitely want one decimal place over here. If it's two decimal places, like 43.52, then you definitely want 39.99. You want at least as many as you have over here. So I'm going to go 39.9 for the heck of it. Now, I also want these distances to be 10 because a class width should be consistent. So I want equals that cell plus 10. Enter. And I'm going to do the same thing I did before. I'm going to turn my, click on the cell, move my mouse over to the little 
right bottom right corner it's called the handle is what that's called so you can move your mouse to the handle and you click hold down and then lift up you drag it down and then lift up and we'll fill in all these values now there's an issue here. These are final exam grades and these are a percentage. So the highest data value we actually have is in the 90s. So when I dragged, I didn't know how far to drag. So I dragged down far enough to cover all my data set, but I don't actually need these bottom two rows. So I'm going to delete them and make them go away because they're unnecessary, at least at this point. All right, this is great. So we have our lower class limits, we have our upper class limits all figured out. Now, if you like, you can actually type these out. 30 to 39, 40 to 49.9, 50 to 59.9, and so on. Oopsie. Yep, 99.9, I'm losing it. There we go. So then I have all the classes. Now, these ones are on the right because as far as Excel is concerned, they're numbers. This is on the left because as far as Excel is concerned, those are text, right? They're words. Excel doesn't understand that these are numbers. So I'm going to highlight all of this in the next columns too and make it all centered. That's this little icon right here on the alignment button. And while I'm at it, I'm going to make it so that this is all in a nice little box. And the way I did that was highlighting what I wanted to have borders around it. And I clicked up here on the little border icon. And again, I'm leaving myself some kind of fake classes up at the top and down at the bottom. I have reasons for that that will come in handy in another video. But for this video, they don't mean much. And just to make it kind of nice and pretty, because we always want to make it easy for our instructors to figure out what's going on, I highlighted the labels up here. All right, now I need to find the midpoints. Now the midpoints are the distance, or it's the halfway point between the lower class limit and the next lower class limit. Now we saw the definition of midpoints back here in section 2.3. It's number in the middle of the class. It is found by adding consecutive lower class limits and dividing by two. Well, isn't it convenient then that we actually just found the lower class limits? So let me put these in here, class, midpoint. All right, so the midpoint would be the, the sum of this cell, which is 30, plus this cell, which is 40. You add them up, you put them in parentheses, and then you divide by 2, and you get 35. Because, of course, halfway between 30 and 39.999999999 forever, because that's what this really is, this goes on forever, we just don't write it that way, would be 35. And then this cell would be 40 plus 50 divided by 2. Now you can do this a couple different ways. One, you could use the little formula thing that I'm doing right here. And then once you've actually created that, you could actually drag it down and it'll fill in the rest of them, right? Except for this last one because it doesn't like it, which is where that kind of method fails us a little bit. So maybe there's another way to do it which is that we know that the class width is consistent for the lower class limits and the upper class limits. Therefore, it's also consistent for the midpoints, which we write right in here. The class width can be used as an aid after the first midpoint has been found. So what that means is you can take your midpoint, add 10 to it because that's still your class width, and then you can go over here to the right, pick on the handle, click on it, and drag down, and there you have all of them, and it even figured out the bottom one correctly too. The reason it flipped out before is because it didn't know what the next cell would be. Right? I'm delete this so that way it makes it nicer. All right, so we have our class midpoints. Lovely. You can use formulas, you can type in them. I mean, if you really wanted to, you could sit there and type. You could say, oh, this is cell uh, 40 plus 50, add them up and divide by two. But cell referencing is so much nicer and quicker. Now we need to find the frequency. So let me get this in here, right here, frequency. And what I did right there is I just copied and pasted because I just wanted to keep the formatting the same. But if you don't want to do it that way, you can, um, I'll do it here. You can highlight these cells, say I want the border, click on this gray, and I want to type relative frequency. And since this isn't bold, then I'm going to make it bold by giving it a control B. Or you can click on the cell and kind of click over here on the left. Control, of course, and B being the buttons on your 
um, keyboard. And in the interest of making this a little bit more compact, I want to do something right here. I'm going to click on it. I'm going to highlight all these cells right here. I'm going to click up here to wrap text. And then I'm going to highlight all these columns. I kind of click on up here on the D where it turns into that downward arrow and I drag my mouse along and then I lift up on my left mouse button and I've highlighted all the columns and then I'm going to move my mouse in between the D and the E column and we're going to drag it over to the left. I'm going to make them narrower so that way it makes the graph or the table a little bit more compact. Um, and the wrap text allows me to do that. If I didn't have the wrap text, they'd start writing all over each other on the cells. All right, now for the frequency, what you need to do is you need to count, which is why I wanted to make this more compact. So you could see we have two right here that are in this class from 30 to 39.9. So my frequency there is two. Then I have five right here. And you can see the five, by the way, I highlight the 40s right here. I highlight them. I lift up on my mouse. Down here in the bottom right corner, do you see how it says count? The count is five. So you can put five right there. There are other ways to do this, but um, for our purposes, this will work fine. Um, if you know more about Excel, you can actually do pivot tables and various other things, and those methods will work fine. So 60 to 69, as long as you know what you're doing, right? So that one's got a count of 11. Then let me figure out the rest of these. 70 to 79 is 20. And if you notice before you lift up your mouse, down at the bottom it says 20R by 1C. That's 20 rows by one column. So I know my count is 20 even though I can see it right there in the bottom corner. So that's 20. And then the 80s are right there at 26. And the 90s are at 12. So 26 and 12. Again, there are a lot of ways to come up with that that might be more fancy, but this will do for our purposes. Um, in order to do it this way, by the way, you'll have to have your data set in order. My data set happens to be in order, but if it wasn't, I could click on the column. So I went up to the top arrow, so it's kind of a downward facing arrow again. And you could go to data and you could use one of these sort features and say, I want to sort it from low to high. That's A to Z. Z to A will be high to low. See that? And then A to Z will be low to high. So that's how to manage that. All right, now for the relative frequency, I need to find something. I need to find the total, so the sum of my frequencies. So I want to find equals sum. I want to add up these numbers right here. Actually, I could add up the whole column. It won't really make any difference. So I'm going to add up H2 to H10. I know that's keeping in some blank values right now, um, and they will actually remain zeros, but um, we'll deal with them in another video. So for right now, I want to add up that entire column, and I get a sum of 88. Now the relative frequency is how frequent each class was in relation to the whole, right? So for this cell, I want equals, and I want two, which is cell H3, divided by that total. Now in theory, that seems like a great idea. And you should, hypothetically speaking, be able to just drag it down. But oh, contraire, it creates problems for you. So let me delete that and show you the issue. The issue is the cell coloring. See this? This one's green, this one's blue. So H3 divided by H11. And then when you drag it down, it takes both of them down a step. So if it if I drag it down one, you'll see it says H4 divided by, uh-oh, H12. Well, I don't want that. H12 has nothing in it. I want it to stay H11 the whole time. And the way to do that is with a cell reference that's fixed. And the way to fix a cell reference is to give it dollar signs. So you're going to make it H3 divided by H11, but give the H11 dollar signs. Let me click up in there. H3 can change. The blue one can change because it's going to get dragged down the column. But the green one, H11, cannot change. It has to stay 88, stay this number. And you can either press the dollar sign H, dollar sign 11, or the way I did it so quickly is the F4 button up at the top of your keyboard. So if you press F4, 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 you'll cycle through all the possibilities. So there's plain H11. Press F4 once, and you get double H, or dollar sign H, dollar sign 11. That's the one you want, the one with dollar signs in front of both of them, because I want to fix this cell in stone. Enter. Now when I click up on the cell, I want to move my cursor to the handle, drag down, and will find all the values for me. Neat, huh? And technically, you can drag it even further. 
All right, we're all done with part four.